This week, the Prime Minister addressed concerns about social engineering in Australian classrooms, saying that schools don't need gender whisperers and defending his decision to send his daughters to a local Christian school. Dr Kevin Donnelly is a senior research fellow with the Australian Catholic University and a well-respected education expert. He's long argued against using education to enforce a political agenda. In an article this week that he wrote, Dr Donnelly said that the cultural left has long targeted children's stories and fairy tales to enforce its politically correct agenda-based theories on identity politics, victimhood, neo-Marxism and feminist gender and queer theories. Dr Kevin Donnelly has just written a best-seller book titled How Political Correctness is Destroying Australia and he joins me now from our Melbourne studios. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Great to have you here. Uh, we're now out now into regional Australia and I think uh, you'll find a lot of supporters for your common sense plain speaking view amongst uh, the communities that I grew up in and I have still many friends and families in. Um, your book's in its third print run, which is extraordinary. Tell us the main sort of guts of your thesis about how much damage political correctness is doing to Australia. Well, Peter, as you know, it's an issue that's been there for 20, 30 years. Tony Abbott talked about it when he was Prime Minister. John Howard talked about the battle of ideas. And uh, he went head to head with Paul Keating a number of times about our history, especially our relationship to the United Kingdom. It's an issue which really a lot of people now are getting concerned about, very worried about. It's very difficult, at, whether at work, around the barbecue, around the dinner table. People now are really worried about what they say, what they talk about. Uh, you can lose your job, you can be uh, vilified on social networking sites. Political correctness, pushed by what I call the cultural left, and we see that in schools every day, uh, it's an issue that we really have to address and remedy. And I hope the new Prime Minister, and I think he is aware of this, will take uh, a leading step to uh, confront it. Let's, let's use the example of, of the article you wrote, the column you wrote this week, about children's stories and fairy tales. You've, as I said, have had a long, long distinguished career as an education uh, expert. You've been part of curriculum reviews. Tell me what the problem is with something as innocent uh, as a fairy tale <laughs> or child story. Well, as you mentioned, uh, the impact of theory, whether it's gender or queer theory or radical feminism or uh, transgender, the impact of theory has been there for many years. I taught English, loved literature, taught it for 18 years. But when I was a member of the Australian Association Teachers for English, I had to resign because I was so appalled about what they were arguing at conferences. They argued, for example, that Cinderella should not be taught because it privileged what they called heteronormativity. What they meant was that the happy ending was when the uh, princess and prince got married. So something like Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare's famous play, again, they argued it privileged love between a man and a woman. I mean, I could go on with lots of examples. I wrote an article in The Australian this week. My favourite was The Three Little Pigs. And as you know, they had to build three houses and they had to uh, safeguard themselves from the wolf. And the strongest house was made of brick in New South Wales some years ago. The curriculum uh, advisor there from the education department argued that three little pigs was offensive to Aborigines because it privileged white Eurocentric patriarchal capitalist buildings with bricks. And uh, it had to be deconstructed in terms of theory. Now, look, I'm sure there's plenty of people at home, uh, my mother amongst them, laughing along with this sort of story, um, Kevin. But, but the reality is this is fed income. You're not making this up. These are the people that have great input into the curriculum in schools, what our children are taught. This is where it's the most damaging. This is not just a joke. This is real. It is. And uh, many years ago, uh, now I, I did my postgraduate work, and uh, Bob Santa Maria, as you know, fought long and hard against uh, socialism. He argued, and I was fortunate enough to meet him a number of times, he argued that you have to know your enemy. So when I did the post-grad work, I looked at what socialism, communism was doing in terms of education. 
And there was a writer, Antonio Gramsci, an Italian Marxist, he argued for the long march through the institutions. So during the 60s and 70s, the cultural left decided that the way to win the battle wasn't at the barricades, it was to take the long march to take over education, universities, schools, uh, the media, politics, the church family. And they've been very successful when I reviewed the national curriculum. I was astounded that across all the subjects, students had to learn uh, about Aboriginal history, culture, spirituality, and that's fine. But at the same time, they learnt nothing, almost nothing, about Western civilization, our Judeo-Christian heritage, epochal events like the Renaissance, the Reformation. So we're actually denying our young people an understanding and a knowledge of what it is about our civilization that we should defend. And uh, really, it's a great shame because we're having generations of young people growing up without knowing the difference between communism and democracy. There's also the issue, isn't there, Kevin, that uh, under Julia Gillard's time as Prime Minister, the sustainable development goals out of the United Nations were built into the, the high school curriculum, uh, primary school as well, and students in, in subjects like maths have to do climate change issues with their maths problems, uh, not just in the science area or in, or in the geography area, but it goes right across or permeates the entire uh, curriculum. Now, I can't remember this ever being debated much at the time. They were slipped in by Julia Gillard and have only been really picked up subsequently. Uh, this is an issue right across the board with, I guess, uh, intellectual independence uh, for, for academics, uh, both at school level, at teacher level, a uh, curriculum people that draft the curriculum, but also in our universities. It's a real issue uh, and a great concern to me. I've been involved for over 20, 30 years now. And what's happening is that the left, the long march, they've been so successful that the national curriculum, you mentioned that, has really been uh, imbued with this cultural left idea about sustainability, about Indigenous. And there's no balance there. I mean, it gets worse because I only found out last week that they're reviewing the national curriculum, the CARA, the body responsible, even though it's only just been fully implemented, they're reviewing the national curriculum. But what they are intending is to transform it uh, in terms of what the OECD calls Education 2030. So we're actually going to have what's happening in schools now in terms of the curriculum imposed by the OECD from overseas, and it's all about so-called sustainability, 21st century learning, uh, collaborative negotiated goal setting, all of these uh, fads that are calculated, I'd argue, to dumb down the curriculum. So if I was a new minister, I'd actually be looking at what ACARA is doing because the reality is we don't need all of this. What we should be doing is having a far more rigorous academic curriculum where we give uh, all children uh, a balanced and comprehensive knowledge and understanding of subjects like music, history, literature, art, without all this indoctrination. But we, we just saw from the recent NAPLAN test, Kevin, that we've got a fifth of Australian children that are so far beyond uh, the pale when it comes to literacy and numeracy. We, we've been importing so many of these ideas from overseas, from UN-type bodies, from the OECD, uh, from so-called global experts. Uh, that, over the last 15 to 20 years, has made us a poorer educational nation, not a richer educational nature, nation. Uh, when are parents going to rear up? Because it's clear that the politicians, I have to say, even on both sides, appear captured by this ideology. And uh, even if governments of the, of the centre-right come in and turn things upside down, the left and all the, um, you know, embedded personnel all the way through the system tend to reorientate it back to the left. In the end, parents have got the greatest power. When are parents going to speak up about their concerns? Well, increasingly, parents are talking, and uh, whether it's around the barbecue or around the dinner table or when they're out shopping, there's been a significant increase, especially in Queensland, but also New South Wales, in homeschooling, because parents are getting genuinely worried about the fact that their children are being indoctrinated, whether it's safe schools, a gender program. Uh, I mean, the Prime Minister talked about this only this week. So parents are concerned... Over 24, 25 per cent of Australian children 
go to independent and Catholic schools. And one reason that is uh, there's such an upsurge in enrolments is because parents are worried about whether schools, in fact, are reflecting the values that they have at home. And uh, I'll finish by saying it's not about money. I mean, the ALP member federally, Andrew Lees, argued for years it's not about money. It's about having a rigorous curriculum. It's about having motivated uh, teachers who aren't drowned in bureaucracy and red tape. And it's having greater autonomy and diversity rather than all roads lead to Canberra. Look, beyond the education uh, issue, in your book, Political Correctness, you tackle the very thorny word of multiculturalism. You know, I'm obviously from an immigrant family. I'm not Indigenous. I think most Australians want to see us remain an immigrant nation, but it's the rate of immigration that gets under <coughs> people's skin, particularly the high rate we run at now, uh, but also this, this culture of multiculturalism where we're all cultures in every culture but no one... Australia culture anymore that's allowed to, to, to knit us all together. We used to celebrate that and celebrate the flag and celebrate things like Australia Day and they're all very much under threat. What's your issue with the term multiculturalism? Well, uh, Pierre Rickman, you might know, was an academic at the ANU, one of Australia's most famous academics. Uh, he argued many years ago that multiculturalism was a contradiction in terms. You can't actually celebrate different cultures, unless, as you said, you have something holding it all together, something that uh, gives a bond, cements it. Now, I'd argue in the book uh, that that's our Western cultural heritage, whether it's common law, Magna Carta, our Westminster system, the New Testament, the whole idea, in fact, that we are all created with inherent dignity, that we should be treated fairly, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, all of that is quite culturally specific in the sense that it's come from Western culture. So multiculturalism really is dangerous because what it ends up, as Geoffrey Blaney, our most famous historian, said some years ago, is a nation of tribes. And uh, Douglas Murray from Europe, UK, he only recently mm. toured Australia and I met him in Melbourne a couple of weeks ago and he said to me, Kevin, don't let Australia go down the same road as the UK and Europe because they now have ghettos in Nice, Paris, uh, wherever it might be, London, uh, because they've un had unrestricted immigration and they've allowed these ghettos to uh, pop up everywhere because they've forgotten the fact, as David Cameron, when he was Prime Minister, said, you need to acknowledge and celebrate the values, beliefs, institutions that hold it together and that ensure our peace and stability. Couldn't agree more with you, Kevin Donnelly. I have to say, whenever I was uh, in Britain or in Europe with a former Prime Minister or another politician, uh, people often said the same thing to us, that we, Australia, were to them uh, the great hope of a country that still could avoid their mistakes. You speak a lot of sense. I'm going to put details about where people can get a copy of your book, How Political Correctness is Destroying Australia, on my Facebook site. Thank you very much for your time tonight. And I should say, if I can interrupt, Peter... A second book is coming out in about four weeks, How Political Correctness is Destroying Education. So we'll have to talk about that as well.